Well, welcome back to the Undervalued Investor YouTube channel, where today we're uncovering the parabolic moves that have been happening in the semiconductor space. Look no further than the Vanek Semiconductor ETF. Year to date, trading up almost 60%, and just within the last couple of weeks, has surpassed its recent all time highs, leading to some speculation. Have these kind of got overvalued? We're seeing some CNBC articles like these stocks have gone too far, too fast during this rally, and analysts are expecting them to fall. Within the Vanek ETF, we got companies like NVIDIA, Taiwan Semiconductors, Broadcom, ASML, Advanced Micro Devices, Intel, Qualcomm. And if we just kind of pivot our focus on the primary leader of the bunch being NVIDIA, the question we have to ask ourselves is this something that is only going to live in this short-term environment based off this AI hype? Because what we have to understand is NVIDIA has been the major outlier because they have a business-to-business -business model right now where companies like Facebook, Amazon, Google, Tesla, they're the ones buying up these highly expensive chips. The H100s that NVIDIA produces for these AI models and these uh, large language models, I mean, they're they're costing around forty dollars to $50,000. So only large businesses can actually afford to build these massive data centers um, that are containing these. Right, and that led to some explosive growth during a time where everybody thought Nvidia was over uh, valued. But if we go back to the cryptocurrency era, uh, where basically the CEO of Nvidia was hyping cryptocurrency, and everybody was basically buying shipping containers of these um, graphics cards, it led to some explosive growth yet again. But again, being a very cyclical cycle, so something tells me that it's unlikely that Nvidia is going to be able to keep up the crazy 100 to 200 percent, you know, growth rate that they've been currently experiencing. Because once they built out these data sensor uh, data centers and they reach parity within the market, the supply and demand might level off to a point where we're kind of playing this game of chicken with the price to earnings multiple. So, if, presuming that Nvidia can continue to grow at this pace, it really only needs to get a few more quarters under its belt to be a buying opportunity today. But that's the gamble, right? But if we look at other, you know, semiconductor ETFs or semiconductor stocks, I should say, like Micron Technology, that recent post. Uh, recently posted earnings. This one is trading up way more than it probably deserves. It did drop on the recent earnings um, because they were lackluster at best. The Q4 revenue came in at about $4 billion, and the uh, full year 2023 revenue is expected to be about $15.5 billion. But keep in mind, that's down 49% year over year, and on the quarter over quarter is down 40%, um, which is pretty dramatic. So they're going to give you some of the better highlights, like they achieved rec uh, record automotive revenue. And keep in mind, automotive revenue is the smallest contributing factor to NVIDIA's growth right now. And considering you know the automotive sector is being largely hindered by this higher interest rate environment. It's it's not one of the best things that I would want to see in a highlight within the first uh, industry to produce or basically introduce the one beta DDR5 and LP5X uh, basically DRAM uh, products, which is kind of intriguing. They also first introduced the 232 layer uh, NAND solid state drive products and data centers and client uh, consumer markets. Data centers are a huge contributing factor to NVIDIA's growth as well. These accomplishments were underpinned by our leadership technology technology and continued strong progress in manufacturing execution. And they achieved world-class, uh, basically mature yields in record time on our industry leading one beta or DRAM and the 232 layer uh, NAND technology. In addition, uh, Micron took several prudent and timely actions to reduce our CapEx in supply in order to address the market imbalance through the course of fiscal 2023. And if we take a look at the revenues here again, as mentioned, you know, for the full year, there's nothing crazy going on. Their gross margins are really not that impressive at nine and eight percent, nothing near close to NVIDIA's whopping. 70% gross margins, uh, operating expenses, you know, within range of what this is more or less coming in with their guidance. But when you look at all the other semiconductor stocks, they just don't look nearly as exciting or as appealing as NVIDIA, which is why people think there might be some kind of a burnout period going on here. And a lot of it's just being driven by people maybe flooding money into these ETFs that are largely dispersing it to a lot of these other, you know, uh, semiconductor stocks. So there is a lot of concern on the horizon here. But again, there's also a lot of technology advancement going on with um, AI and cloud computing. So the question is, is how much uh, room is there continue to grow in the sales uh, for cloud and AI from these mega giants like Apple, Amazon, and some of these automakers? And that's the real question that currently underpins the entire semiconductor sector. And I'd love to know what you think in that comment section below.